Lighting has the power to make or break a space. Unfortunately, it is often an afterthought and what otherwise may have been a well-designed room can be quickly ruined by poor lighting choices. In this video, I'll go through the three common lighting mistakes and four useful tips that you can easily follow. Mistake one, incorrect color temperatures. One of the biggest lighting mistakes that I often come across is using an incorrect lighting temperature. Color temperature is a spectrum measured in Kelvin, ranging from 1000 to 10,000 Kelvin, going from warm to cool. The four main categories of light colors are warm white, soft white, bright white, and daylight. Warm white bulbs are 2700 to 3000 Kelvin and emit a warm golden yellow light. It is a typical color emitted by an incandescent bulb. Warm white bulbs are most suited to bedrooms, living rooms, and dining rooms as they create a cozy, inviting, and calm atmosphere. Soft white bulbs are 3000 to 4000 Kelvin and are slightly cooler than warm white bulbs. They emit a yellowish white light. These bulbs are most appropriate to be used in the bathrooms or kitchens as they create a friendly and bright atmosphere. Bright white bulbs are 4000 to 5000 Kelvin. These lights emit a color that is between white and blue. In terms of home applications, these lights are most suited to being used in the home office or garage. The final category, daylight, is actually quite deceptive. Many of us think that daylight corresponds with a globe that will create a bright, light, and airy space. However, it actually creates the opposite effect. In fact, daylight bulbs create a sterile and cold atmosphere as they emit blue tone light. These bulbs are usually used in hospital, commercial, or office spaces as they maximize color contrast which makes us more alert and improves concentration. They create the opposite of a warm and cozy atmosphere that you typically want in a home, so it is best to avoid them where possible. Luckily, these days you can get smart LED bulbs where not only the brightness of the lights can be altered, but also the temperature, all through an app on your phone, a remote, or another smart device like Google Home or Alec. If you have smart bulbs in your home but set at the wrong temperature, this becomes a very easy fix. Personally, I like to use Philips Hue bulbs as they are very stable, produce nice color, and are intuitive to use. However, these bulbs can be quite pricey, so a budget alternative is the IKEA Trot Free system, or the LifeX system that falls somewhere in between. I have these bulbs linked down below in the description box so you can check them out. Mistake 2. Mixing color temperatures. Closely related to choosing the wrong color temperature, another common mistake is having inconsistent temperature in a single space. While you should use a warm white bulb in a bedroom and a soft white bulb in a bathroom, you shouldn't mix these two color temperatures in a singular room. This is because when two lights of different colors are in close proximity, the differences in temperature became very apparent, which is startling and creates an uneasy, disjointed feel in the room. It makes furniture and room decor as well as skin tones look off. You may be wondering, what to do in an open plan space where the living and kitchen areas are in the same space? The general rule is that a kitchen should have a cooler tone light than a living area. However, in this instance, a compromise can be made by using a color temperature in between warm white and soft white so that we have a consistent temperature. Mistake 3. Not layering lighting. The third mistake is not using enough types of lighting throughout a space. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I've personally made in the past. There are four types of lighting used in homes. Overhead lighting, ambient lighting, task lighting, and accent lighting. It is important to use at least two, if not all, of these lighting types in a room at various places and heights so that light is evenly dispersed. This process is known as layering lighting. Overhead lighting most commonly comes in the form of ceiling lights. Pretty much every room in the house has overhead lighting, and many people make the mistake of solely relying on it as their light source. As the light source is from above, this type of lighting often creates a very unflattering shadow onto people and objects, especially if it isn't used with other types of lighting. 
Next, there is ambient lighting. This type of lighting has a soft, natural feeling. An example would be a lamp or pendant with a fabric shade or an opaque glass shade as they create a soft, warm glow. Ultimately, you should aim to have a few of these spread out across the room to evenly light it. Task lighting, also known as directional lighting. This is used in areas where a specific task is completed, such as reading, writing, or preparing food. In contrast to ambient lighting that serves both an aesthetic and functional purpose, task lighting is the most functional layer of light. It is much brighter and has a narrow beam rather than ambient lighting that is dimmer and has an even glow. Some examples of task lights are table lamps, bathroom vanity lights, track lights, and under cabinet lighting. Finally, accent lighting. This is the least functional and most aesthetic form of lighting used to bring attention to certain areas or objects such as an artwork, furnishing, or architectural details. It is often used to make the space more dramatic and stylish by increasing contrast. Accent lighting is generally brighter than ambient lighting, so it should only be used sparingly. A few examples may be recessed LED light strips under vanities or behind mirrors, recessed spot ceiling lights or track lights that are angled to accentuate a certain object or feature in a room. If you own your own home, there are unlimited options for layering lighting, such as pendant lights, chandeliers, wall sconces, and track lighting to name a few. If you are renting, some rental-friendly solutions include table lamps, floor lamps, overhead lamps, and light strips as they don't require drilling or routing cables. If simple drilling is allowed, a scone or wall lamp can be a great addition. Just make sure to hide the wire using cable routers. Combining these lighting types at varying heights and locations throughout a room can really elevate the space. It creates a dynamic environment as colors, textures, and other design elements are enhanced. Tip 1. Match lighting fixtures to other elements in the room. While we have mainly been focused on how to enhance the feel of a room, it is equally important to consider the look. When choosing lighting fixtures, you want to match them to other elements in your home for continuity. This can be done through color, texture, or material so that the space feels cohesive and not siloed. One of the simplest ways to do this is by matching your lighting fixtures to your hardware. As an example, in your kitchen you may have matte black hardware such as tabs or cupboard handles. You would want to match these features with lighting fixtures that is also matte black so the space is cohesive. Similarly, if you have matte black elements in your living room, a matte black floor lamp could complete the look. This tends to be more profound in the bathroom where you have a lot of metals going on. You will often see designers using similar material or color for the sconces or lamps as found in the hardware to create a cohesive look. The same concept also applies outside of metals, such as matching textures like rattan or using similar fabrics that speak to each other. Tip 2. Diffuse your light sources. Another tip is to diffuse your light sources as it reduces harsh shadows. Diffusing light sources has a similar effect to a cloud going in front of the sun. When it's cloudy, you can see more clearly than when you're in direct sunlight. This concept is also used in photography and filmmaking, as the subject under a diffused light looks much more flattering than a direct light. Incorporating lampshades or opal glass shades will help soften and break up the light to make the space more flattering for both the people and objects around it. While sometimes you may want an exposed light for visual interest, consider also having a source of diffused light to evenly lit the room. Tip 3. Use dimmers. On a similar note, it is important to be able to adjust the brightness of lights depending on the time of day and task you want to accomplish. You don't want to have a super bright light before going to bed or dim light when reading. Dimming lights give you the ability to alter the atmosphere of your space. As an example, you may want to turn down the lights in your dining room when entertaining to create a more intimate atmosphere. Traditionally, 
Lights could only be dimmed through hardware on the light switch. However, nowadays it can be done digitally through smart bulbs. As I mentioned before, I like to use Philips Hue bulbs that can be dimmed through an app or remote, but there are also budget alternatives such as the IKEA Trot Free system. Smart bulbs are a great option for renters. However, if you're thinking of renovating or if you're in the process of building your own home, Integrating traditional dimmers or smart switches works well and isn't too expensive. Tip 4. Light your outdoor spaces. The final lighting tip that is often considered as an afterthought is lighting outdoor spaces including your balconies and backyards. At night time, a pitch black window encloses an interior and makes it feel small. By adding lights outside such as outdoor sconces, spotlights in a pot plant, or by lighting up a tree with fairy lights, you can make your room feel larger as it encourages you to look outside which creates the illusion of a larger space. While it does take some time and patience to perfect lighting in a room, it is well worth the effort so you can enjoy a properly lit room no matter the time of day or task. If you enjoy this educational type video, let me know in the comment section below what topics you want me to cover next. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.